Hi everyone, I'm Martin Britton, I'm the CIO of Natural Resources Wales. Um, how many of you have heard of Natural Resources Wales? Show of hands? Oh, this is pretty good. Uh, when I did this speech uh, across the bridge, um, there was many fewer hands raised. But they had heard of Wales, some of them, which was good. Um, we've so we've got uh, around 1,900 staff. Um, we've got quite a unique remit. We're the only organisation in the world who has responsibility for um, sustaining the environment, um, but also for uh, helping the economy grow as well. We've got a broad range of functions. Here, that video shows us um, plugging a breach in some flood defences. That's just one of our functions. We've also uh, managed a large part of Wales's woodland as well, something like 7%. And we've got visitor centres. We monitor species. Uh, we monitor marine wildlife. Uh, we provide advice on planning. We regulate waste. Um, and we've also got visitor centres, mountain bike trails and stuff like that. So there's quite a lot of stuff we do with our staff. We're incredibly ge geographically diverse. We're all over Wales, uh, 50 different locations, uh, 50 plus actually, and we work um, indoors, outdoors, all over the place, at sea, everywhere. So there's quite a lot of challenges in an ICT landscape. Uh, we were formed on the 1st of April 2013 from three legacy bodies, which is the Environment Agency for Wales, Countryside Council for Wales and Forestry Commission Wales, and we absorbed all their staff and functions and some staff from Welsh Government as well. So who are our customers? Well, the people of Wales, obviously, because one of the things we do is look after the environment, so the air we breathe and the things we eat and all that sort of thing. Uh, also, people who go to the outdoors in Wales may use our facilities as well. Uh, businesses in Wales, whom we transact with, uh, the environment of Wales, obviously, and we've got our internal customers too, so we've got the whole suite of customer types there. So how do we look after those customers? Well, we've got a broad basis of platforms, actually, but they're all primarily cloud-based. So we've got Office 365, Microsoft Azure, Link, Yammer, Enterprise Mobility Suite, Windows 8 tablets, Surfaces, and Windows phones. But the technology is not really all that important. It's what we do with it that counts. So on day one, uh, our cloud email service went live. And it went live a week prior to us going live, um, which was April the 1st, 2013. I'd been in post 10 and a half weeks at that point. One of the reasons we picked cloud um, was because I had 10 and a half weeks. So the program that we'd been setting up, uh, Natural Resources Wales, hadn't actually put any tin on the ground at that point. So necessity was a mother invention in that sense. So there was no way we could have deployed cloud-based infrastructure in that time. And I'm very thankful to say that was one of the things that forced us into the decision of using cloud. So how this worked was on day one, staff were using the legacy body equipment. Um, and this allowed access then to our single email system, which is in the cloud, and everybody just pointed their devices at our new cloud system. But there was performance issues with this because the legacy body networks weren't necessarily optimized for cloud. Um, we had lots of old stuff lying around, old kit, old versions of Office, old Internet Explorer, and very little mobile computing. We had a few iPads knocking about, and, and that was about it, really. And when we've got lots of environmental workers, that obviously prevents, uh, pr provides a lot of challenges in terms of users feeling disconnected from the wider workplace. And when you're trying to bring three cultures together, that in particular then becomes a bit of a difficulty. So that's what our network looked like on day one. We had our former EA Wales users segregated in one part, former CCW in another, FCW in another, and a small contingent of new NRW people, about 30 or 40 people, including me, on another. And we were all connecting through to Office 365. These users, too, were still subscribing to some legacy apps over the border to Environment Agency Wales, over the other border to Scotland for FCW, uh, subscribing to FCGB stuff, and CCW had a load of legacy applications based up in Bangor. Interesting to note as well, we didn't inherit any IT capability whatsoever from the former FCW or former EAW users because their IT bases of operation were in different countries to us. So we only inherited a small team from CCW who are actually the smallest component of NRW when we were formed as well. So we took some decisions early on. We were going to do it ourselves, build our own IT. Um, I was on a panel earlier where I talked about this. We decided not to use um, a large system integrator, and we thought we could do it ourselves. And there was a, a, some very good reasons why we did that as well. So the world had changed. We knew that. We wanted to move away from waiting six weeks for a server to arrive and another six weeks for it to be built, and it costing us eight times what we could get it from PC World for. So we went to cloud. There's also the, the government mandate as well, as I see it as mandate, uh, GDS, Cloud First or Justify. Um, 
also the other thing was budgetary challenges. Well, we didn't have enough money to be paying SIs £1,400 a day for a project manager. It just wasn't an option for us. So we use independent contractors and we use internal staff wherever possible. In fact, my IT team at the moment, my business as usual team, consists of 69 people and one contractor. Our economic commitment as well is to provide high quality skilled jobs in Wales. Our team is based in North West Wales in Bangor, so an area of fewer opportunities. And we've got quite a lot of high skilled jobs there and we've grown this department now so it meets the needs of the wider business. We also launched an apprenticeship scheme. It's the first funded Microsoft apprenticeship scheme in Wales. We wanted to use industry qualifications at all costs. We didn't want to use NVQs. We wanted something that the industry would recognise. Uh, we even did a lot of research on what the industry wanted, and it was MCSE and MCP and things like that, not NVQ level two. So that was why we went down that path. So we said we'd set up this apprenticeship and we'd have two years, and then we'd give them an industry qualification at the end. And if we wanted to, we'd employ them. Uh, so that says there currently we have nine apprentices. That's not true. We had a 100% conversion rate. They've all got permanent jobs with us now. We've actually got five new apprentices who are starting next month. And one of the great things about that is that three of them are female as well, because a real push for us is to, be, to address the gender imbalance in ICT. The scheme has been adopted by a few other public sector bodies too, which is fantastic. But I think one of the main benefits is that these people became use, useful to us within three months. Um, it's really changed the dynamic amongst the permanent staff. Um, after the first couple of months they were there, I set them a challenge to write a mobile app within a month that would provide flood alerts to the public of Wales, and they did it. And all the permanent staff said, you haven't got enough time, you'll never be able to do it, and they didn't listen to them, they just steamed into it, learned how to program, pushed the app out there and got it done. What this also means for us, having this organic growth, is we've got this upward pressure in the team, so it's pushing people into different jobs. And I don't want anybody to be in dead man's shoes and stuck in the same job for eight or nine years, so it's a really dynamic environment. And if these people take their industry qualification in a couple of years' time and bugger off to a different company, then good. I'm glad, because we're improving the ICT dynamic in Wales then too. So what would we do with our applications? Um, they're all in Azure. So we've got a very minimal data center footprint. We've just got some network stuff and some Active Directory domain controllers and our internet connection. Everything else is up in the cloud. Um, this means we only pay for the servers when we use them, so we wind them down on the weekend, and we can spin up a server in five minutes, which compared to six, eight, ten weeks of physical infrastructure makes a hell of a difference in terms of getting much shorter rollouts. And what we're also doing is simplifying applications as they come across as we migrate them from the Environment Agency and the Forestry Commission. So applications that have grown arms and legs over 20 years and were spawned from a mainframe system many years ago, we're pairing that right back to essential functionality and changing our business processes around it. So this means in the last two years, we've been able to do this. And uh, as I'm sure you'll see, there's quite a lot of things in here. And I've actually left some out because I run out of space. So in a public sector body, over the last two years, we have installed uh, a new finance system, finance and payroll, which is based on Agresso. We've got our Azure virtual data center. We've got VPN connections out to all our uh, managed service providers. We've got a mobile deployment, which I'll talk about later. We've got a CRM system. We're the first body to deploy Office 365. We've got a laboratory information management system, our apprenticeship scheme. We rolled out 2,000 bits of kit to our staff. Uh, we rolled out a new internet site, a document management system, an intranet. We've rolled out Yammer. We've rolled out Link, which I'll talk about in a bit, VoIP telephony, and mobile apps. So Link was originally just deployed as uh, presence and instant messaging. Um, but then we gave uh, webcams and headphones to all users, and we deployed link suites as well, which is basically a PC with a webcam and a headset in a room, in a meeting room. Um, because we inherited a load of old kit, we used that, so uh, link suite cost us 80 quid, uh, as opposed to traditional video conferencing technology is quite a difference, and the quality is excellent. And we also rolled out Windows tables, it says there, tablets, and Windows phones too. So over time, people have stopped using conference call facilities and Link is now standard. Um, people use it for meetings all the time. So we have thousands and thousands of Link minutes every day. And what this means is that it saves us approximately £18,000 per month versus traditional conference call and facilities. This doesn't include the change in way of working, which has massively reduced travel and subsistence costs as well. So frankly, 18K is the tip of the iceberg. But what I'm struggling to do is find reference points to find out how much we're spending on travel and subsistence before NRW was formed to compare it to now. But I imagine it's massive. And obviously much greater staff engagement as well, because people are meeting face-to-face, -face, as in virtually face-to-face, -face, much more often than they would have met an actual face-to-face -face before. 
Mobility, all our environmental users before, well, they didn't have any uh, connectivity to the organization, so we rolled out 600 Windows smartphones and 600 Windows ruggedized tablets and 80 surfaces as well. Surfaces get a bit of a bad press, uh, actually, but all our executive team think they're fantastic. It's really enable people to work when they do have to go to face-to-face -face meetings when they're on the move, usually actually with um, other organizations is when we have to do face-to-face. What this means, so if there's an incident such as this one, this is a real life incident, this happened in a caravan park near Aberystwyth a couple of years ago, a storm was heading over the UK and was meant to carry on tracking through and it didn't and it dumped everything down on this caravan park and flooded it. When this sort of thing happens or a pollution incident happens, if there's often a waste fire that happens quite a lot recently actually, then we can have people on site using their tablets, using Link to um, link back to our control centres, which we've got a few of which across Wales, and the people who are running the incident in the office can um, have a much better, clearer picture of what to do and respond in a much more effective way, consequently, rather than just having a description of the event. So we've done quite a few firsts here. Um, like I said, first public sector body in Wales to use 365, the first apprenticeship scheme, and the first users of cloud-based GIS as well. So this is in the world, so we're the first organisation to have cloud-based GIS in the world. What this means is, uh, traditionally used to have powerful PCs to run GIS, which kind of limits you to run it only at the desktop, only in an office. But now we've got our tablet users out in the field able to access all our GIS information, and we've got years and years and years of it that we've inherited, so they can make more effective evidence-based decisions whilst they're out in the field. Also, the use of tablets has enabled um, an improved uh, health and safety approach as well. And there's a video at the end of this which will describe that a bit better. So what we're doing next, well, we keep on trying to do these things at first, so we're commercialising now, so we're commercialising our operation. We're going to start selling uh, our bilingual help desk, because any of you who operate in the public sector will know it's quite difficult to transact with an SI and get a fully uh, bilingual help desk. Um, we're going to provide cloud consulting to people, because we've managed to do this in this environment. Uh, ICT training. Uh, as we're so dispersed all across Wales in 50 locations, it's much easier for us to provide that geographical capability to an organisation that's widespread than perhaps them to do it themselves. Cloud hosting too, so we can host within our tenancy. We've got the periphery security controls in place, so we can sit, sell that service to others. And field support as well. Again, we've got engineers everywhere who can help with this. So this video I'm going to show now is something that Microsoft uh, worked on us with, um, and basically it highlights the changes that have uh, happened in the workplace and have been enabled by our move to the cloud over the last two years. Natural Resources Wales was formed from the merger of three former bodies, the Environment Agency for Wales, the Forestry Commission Wales and the Countryside Council for Wales. In the last 18 months, we've rolled out Microsoft Office 365, we've rolled out a geographical information system in Microsoft Azure, we've rolled out Microsoft Link, we've got our OneDrive for Business, and we've got SharePoint system. Mobile computing's really helped connect up parts of the business that weren't connected before. The tablet rollout we did was 600 units and 600 smartphones across to our more operational field-based workers for them to work in the field on a day-to-day -day basis. We're on site in Forest Vac Industrial Estate, the scene of a huge industrial fire. We're able to quickly download drainage maps from the cloud to our Windows tablets and Windows smartphones and we're able to see what's happening with the drainage underneath the site. That sort of information is invaluable to us when we're out working in the field. When I come down to site myself as a team leader, I use my Windows tablet to undertake workplace safety inspections. So I'll use OneNote to fill out a report of what's going on on the site. Previously, everybody had a slightly different system for undertaking safety inspections, so there was very little consistency. We can share information directly with our colleagues back in the office and we can share good practice. I was incredibly sceptical when the comms team came to me and said they wanted to roll out Yammer. I thought people were going to use it like Facebook and people would waste a lot of time. And well, how wrong was I? Just taking a photograph out on the riverbank of the team removing the trees in Kidwelly. I'm going to upload it onto Yammer using our Windows smartphone and then I'm going to post that so that the people back in the office can see the sorts of work that we get involved with. It's been a fantastic success. It went from a very small pilot to everybody getting involved and just grew uncontrollably. Now the, pretty much the whole organisation uses it on a regular basis. There's new content pretty much every hour of every day on there and it's all relevant, it's all about sharing knowledge and it's all work-based. It's fantastic.
It's really nice to see that our Chief Executive, M.A. Roberts, sees the Yammer posts and he responds. He engages in conversation directly with the staff out on site, which really makes them feel valued. One of the main benefits of uh, OneDrive is for our operational staff. So they're able to create document libraries, they can synchronise them with a the device. So if they don't have uh, a good connection uh, where they're based, they can still access the document libraries they need to, which is critical really because they've got lots of operational guidance and health and safety checklists and forms which they can access them wherever they need. We could be on a river bank, in a forest or one of our national nature reserves miles away from Wi-Fi signal and the guys are still able to gain access to the right documents that they need for their job. From day one we considered the security issue of moving to the cloud and the Office 365 cloud was already accredited to official level. Our responsibility is to ensure that our connection to the cloud is robust and our internal network security is robust. Microsoft's really, really helping myself and my team to become more connected. It's unlocked a whole world for myself and my team, which previously we had no access to. The Microsoft platform underpins all the work we do, but it's one thing to give technology to people and hope they get on with it. It's another thing for our staff to completely embrace the change and to run with the technology and use it to its full effect, which is what we're starting to do now, which is a real fantastic achievement. right as well. I was really sceptical about Yammer. I'm, I'm really wrong about it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much our story. So um, I guess I'm just going to open it up um, if anybody has any questions, actually. Yes. Uh, I just wonder if you could give a bit more detail about the cultural change. Sure. Sorry? 1,900 staff from three, very, well, actually four very different cultures because we had some people come across from Welsh government as well. So in terms of um, the cultural change, what, what technology has enabled is us to try and bring them together collaboratively through means such as the document management system and Yammer and get people talking across those teams. Of course, there's massive resistance to change. People had worked for these legacy organisations sometimes for decades and they were very involved with those. Um, and change into an organisation where perhaps the focus is not just ecology anymore, now it's got an economic focus as well, was uh, a dogmatic and ideological shift for a lot of people too. Now, obviously, some people, that's not going to suit 100%, uh, and, and some people obviously chose that being in an RW wasn't what they wanted to do. Um, but on the whole, um, almost all the staff um, we've retained, um, and what we've tried to do is grow a new culture uh, of NRW, and we're, we promote a lot our values as an organisation um, and how we're transforming the organisation to meet our values, and we've got a roadmap of how to achieve that now. But it's, it's over a long period of time, because cultural change can be enabled by digital change and helped along, but really it's something that takes a lot, lot longer than sticking some kit on the ground. Okay, so Link you can use um, with anybody, just uh, it can run from a browser. So often we have collaborative Link meetings um, with external parties and they can connect just using a browser. And I suppose that's our primary method of interaction. Obviously we can do all the file sharing stuff that SharePoint allows you to do as well, which is the premise of our, our DMS. Um, so that bit's quite straightforward. Um, but yeah, I'd say Link was our primary tool. We've also um, joined up our, ya our Yammer to other networks as well in other organisations, so we can collaborate with people who work in similar fields to us, perhaps across the border or within Wales as well. Yes? How much do you think um, you will help by the fact that you're a brand new organisation, so you could introduce this change, not coming from somewhere where your estate was maybe held in the contracts? Or I'm off, yeah. There's often, I'm often asked this question, actually, and people say, oh, it must have been great going to a greenfield organisation. But actually, it was a very, very brown, very, very muddy field because we had lots of embedded contracts with um, Capgemini via the Environment Agency. They hosted a lot of our organisations um, and also many other suppliers as well. Some of our, um, our Welsh government stuff was uh, through Atos, uh, and we had all the sort of plethora of vendors. What we chose to do, though, was build a load of new stuff and wind the old stuff down, and we just got on with it and did it. I, th I think often in public sector, we superimpose a lot of barriers on ourselves, and we're our own worst enemy in terms of um, lack of inertia and stuff like that. And 
you know, we just kicked the barriers down and got on with it. We didn't have any choice because we had ten and a half weeks before we went live, so we just had to get on and do it. And I think lots of people, if they were put in that position and cornered, would do exactly the same thing as well. I think it's quite easy to, to not challenge the status quo um, or to think it's too big to challenge. Um, but w with the budget cuts that are upon us, I don't know if we have any option. Yeah, that's very true, and, and you need a lot of money to do transformation, absolutely. The, 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 when the key drivers, though, is getting the top-down support, so from the very top table, knowing things have to change, uh, and really allowing the IT people to, to push the agenda, working alongside the business to give the business what they need. That's the key thing. So our chief exec has been very on board since day one in understanding that we had to change radically as a business, and this has helped me push through a lot of change that the business has been quite resistant to in some areas as well. Yes. Have you had to put some controls in on Yammer to prevent the proliferation of hundreds and hundreds of groups? Uh, I, I'm a Microsoft Excel MVP. Microsoft use Yammer as well for a lot of our technical stuff. And most of us MVPs get fed up because there's such a proliferation of groups that you, suddenly you can't find anything. Yeah. How have you managed to control that? It's actually, I, I was so surprised by Yammer that it works, it's, it's because like I said in the video, I thought it was just going to be like Facebook and people would be posting pictures of the meal they had last night on there and stuff like that. Or, but no, it really wasn't, um, and people use it in such a constructive way. In terms of groups, we have got quite a few groups, um, and, and it's an interesting challenge because what you're trying to do is get people to contribute more widely with the wider organization, but what they do is try to set themselves up in little, little blocks, just three or four of them in their own little group. Um, at the moment, I think we're at a point where most of the organization is involved. Almost everybody is logged in now within the last 12 months. And out of those people who log in, about a 1,000 of those use it regularly. Um, so that's really good. We have got quite a few groups. I went on and had a look yesterday, actually, because I was looking for a group. And maybe we've got 20 or 30. So I think it may be something we have to look at in the future in terms of saying, well, OK, perhaps these groups need approval before we create them. But at the moment, I don't think it's a problem. So I've taken the approach. Um, more recently in my career of um, actually letting the users decide and being a bit more democratic about it, so we'll see how they get on with it. That's fine for 1900, when you've got 600, scattered up the world, Yeah, I bet. Real exactly, I think our size probably works in our favour. Yes? Hi, I'm involved in online marketing, and you've talked a lot Hi, I'm involved in online marketing, and you've talked a lot about the internal dynamics of communications. Mm. I was wondering if you could just give us a bit of a broad overview of how social media, online marketing monitoring plays into the National Resources Wales agenda and comms strategy. Yeah, so you, you're probably better off asking our comms director, <laughs> but I can tell you that we are actively engaged with Twitter, Facebook and stuff like that. Um, and we do do a lot of work in terms of looking at trends and what's going on on Twitter. We also update the public a lot in terms of flood alerts, um, pollution incidents, particularly if there's an impact on air quality. So most of our engagement in that sense is about providing communications and going, going outward rather than necessarily um, messages coming inward. Um, for those sort of things, we typically would do consultations and, and things like that. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, so I think whenever I get asked about, oh, so you guys have moved to the cloud, oh, we're thinking about doing it, and I've been having the same conversation with people for the last two years who keep on thinking about doing it every time I come to one of these events, and they say to me, aren't you worried about the Patriot Act, and aren't you worried about the NSA? And the simple answer is, no, I'm not. I'm not sure the NSA would be awfully interested in what Natural Resources Wales were doing, and regardless of what our internet security, if they wanted to, they could probably find out anyway. Um, so what we do in terms of security, we've got quite a robust uh, approach to making sure the perimeter of our network is secure, and we have regular pen test regimes uh, and things like that. But as for the Microsoft Cloud, for example, it's accredited to official, which means we can store official. That includes official sensitive on it. That's uh, due diligence is undertaken by Cabinet Office. That's why it's on the G Cloud. Um, so I think people need to relax about it. The whole premise of the new uh, 
the, new, the new marking system for information was to help people move to the cloud. That's why we went from IL-1, IL-2, IL-3 to official, official sensitive top secret. It was to encourage that movement. But still, even though GDS and cabinet officers are saying, go for it, people are still saying, oh, I'm not sure about this. And um, I just think, you know, people need to, to get with the program, really.